Good boogie right there. Thank you for, uh, for anybody. And Sarah and the Swell, who are fantastic. Please clap for them. They were, they were great for a little bit. I am, uh, I am very excited to be here on uh, this pool table. Fucking uh, Jody Foster style. This is uh, outstanding. I, uh, is I, mean, I am, uh, this is great. How are you? Good to see you. People staring at me like Rodney King watching an episode of Tops. I, um, I'm, I'm just fucking around. I'm extremely excited to be here, uh, mostly uh, because my children are not. Uh, I, that, I'm, yeah, you know, I'm, I don't know, you have kids, you're just like, you just hate mine. You're just like, yeah, you're getting a dicks. Uh, yeah, no, right? It's like I'm told, I got a four year old at home who is just driving me fucking crazy. I am really starting to wish I had kidnapped that kid. I am. Uh, uh, no, that's a, that's a lie. I haven't kidnapped uh, any children. If I had, I would uh, fucking tell you, because that would just be, you know, like a tactical blunder. And uh, who, would, who would kidnap a four year old? Have you met a four year old? What, who would take one? Why would you do that? Seriously, would you see the man pull up, throw the kid in, drive about 50 feet, stop? Get out! Get the fuck out! I don't know, okay? I don't know! Don't ask me things. Seriously, a four year old does not shut up, ever. They just are like, nah, 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 nah. If my son got kidnapped, he'd be like, why do you use a duck head? You should use hesitant. You can use guys' head. That's pretty sick. I can tell you that. Get the fuck out of the van. You are totally ruining this. Like, seriously, if I got the call and I said I'd been kidnapped, my very first reaction would be... Ah. Oh. <laughs> That's not true, just, I mean, just give me, get him back. But, give me a couple hours to see a movie. Oh, I'm amplified now. That's probably going to help. With the, with the jokes. All right, yeah. So where do we go from here? So, yeah, I do. So I know you have a child. One child. Does anybody else have kids in the room? Anyone at all? It's a room full of fucking 21 year old hipsters. Of course you are. You are children. I, uh, uh, this is so, you have no idea how strange this is as a comedian, seriously. Like, a room full of people too attractive to ever be found in a comedy book. Ever. This is, stand up comedy is a lot like rock and roll with just a lot more flop sweat and uglier people, essentially. That's right, right? I right know. So, seriously. I'll pay you twenty billion dollars to go pull the fire alarm. I um, <laughs> no, I, I do. I do have. Uh, I do have. Show. I have a four-year-old who he's going through a big naked phase right now. Did, did your kid go through naked? He just naked all the time. I can't. Seriously, I like. I can't get him to keep his pants on. I can't get his mom to take hers off. That's a uh, different kettle of fish. But seriously, he's just fucking naked. Like I came home the other day, he was buck naked except for a pair of light-up moon boots. Yeah, it is true what they say, man. You gotta be careful what you do around your kids, because they'll imitate everything that you see. Give daddy back his boots. So that's a horrible image to plant in your brains. I'm very sorry. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars to build a No, and uh, yeah, and yeah, and four-year-old is a tough age because they like they can talk and they ask questions and like hard questions, you know, like what happened when grandma died or like where do rainbows come from? Or are people who put yellow ribbons on Humvees and capable of seeing the irony? Or are they just assholes who don't care, you know? And you can't lie to kids, right? So you have to be like, well, they're assholes, uh, so I mean, Let me show you how to key a car. I, uh, that's, his, that, that's his life, he's been born into my family. I've got, we've got a strange uh, family. It's me, uh, my crazy wife, my, I have a lesbian sister. Which is great. I love having a lesbian sister. I mean, not only is she a cool person, but you know, usually if you have an expensive college degree and you spend your time telling jokes in bars, you're considered the bad kid. Um, you know, as long as she's still shacking with the black chick, I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, thank you, sis. Like, and she actually has a very funny coming out story, which I should probably uh, let her know I tell on stage, but you know, she can buy a CD like anybody. Um, <laughs> She actually, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we're from, we're, she, we're from Colorado Springs. You guys know where Colorado is? Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the big square ones in the middle. Like, I know this is New England and you don't give a fuck. Like, it's like Boston, Worcester, LA. Like, I know that's how you think, but we're, yeah, we're from Colorado Springs, which is a horrible place to be gay or, uh, to be. It's, uh, just, uh, like, seriously, like if Donald Rumsfeld was the city, it would be Colorado Springs, but that's... That's where my sister, that's where the gayness hit, or that's where she was doing, whatever, I don't know what the verb is, but she was 
living in my my parents' basement, my very Catholic parents' basement, uh, you know, and my mom figures out that she's gay. Like, I mean, I don't know if it was the chain wallet or all the chicks sleeping over, but somehow Encyclopedia Mom cracks the case. And uh, being a good Catholic, so she's drink a gallon of white wine and confront her. Yeah, I did. So my sister rolls in, my mom's like, hey, are you gay? My sister's like, yeah, are you an alcoholic? And my mom's like, yeah. And they just start crying and hugging each other on the living room floor. So a few hours later, my dad, uh, the junior high school principal and amateur magician, and that hurts to say, uh, by the way. Just a tip for the parents, if you ever want to make sure your kid graduates high school a version, just pick up a few card tricks and show them to his dates. It works like you wouldn't believe, like shuffle, put your card back anywhere. Ah, Tim's unfuckable. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Like magic. Okay, and so anyway, so he comes home and he finds his wife and daughter on the floor. And he's like, uh, what's up, hon? And my mom sits up and goes, I'm an alcoholic. Your daughter's a lesbian. And we want Taco Bell. <laughs> My dad's like, uh, right. He, like, he doesn't want to deal with alcoholic, and he doesn't know if he was a lesbian, but by God, he knows Taco Bell. He's like, right, on it, bow. He shoots off to Taco Bell, where he just starts ordering food. He's like, and a taco, and a taco, and a taco. And a... Like, I think on some level, he realizes as long as he's still at the Taco Bell step, he doesn't have to go home and deal with the rest of it, right? Like, like and a taco, and a taco, and a taco, and a taco. Until he runs out of money. A man with a job runs out of money at a Taco Bell. That is a lot of Taco Bell. Right, so, he's a, but then, but so now he's got to go home and deal with it. They give him his tacos, like two rope-handled shopping bags filled with tacos. And he has to go home and he stacks them up in the car. And he's, he's trying to leave and he can't get the key in the ignition. You know how like sometimes it just like sticks and it won't go in. And like, so he's like fighting to get the key in. And the more he's fighting, the more shit starting to work in the back of his mind. And he starts to lose it, right? He's like, like the fucking key. What about the fucking door flies open, there's like this 300 pound black woman standing there, and she goes, Motherfucker! What are you doing in my car? <laughs> and I love my dad, because he goes up and goes, my wife's an alcoholic, my daughter's a lesbian, and they want Taco Bell. <laughs> like, she's gonna go, okay, keep the car. Leave the tacos. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's my, and I am married, which I love. I love being married. My single friends, Brennan, they don't get it. They're like, dude, man, you're tight down. You got the ball and chain. We got freedom. You don't got any freedom. And I'm like, what freedom? There was no freedom when I was single. I mean, A, look at me. I'm a goofy looking dude. It's fine. I'm comfortable with it. But the best I can look is the guy from Powder. All right? Like, I got everything working. Like, it's fine. I'm just saying there's not a lot of freedom. If you're a goofy looking single guy, right? Like, if you're a good looking guy, you want to meet a woman, you meet a woman, you're done. If you're goofy looking, you got to be on all the time. Because you don't know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, you got to throw a lot of spaghetti against the wall before something sticks, right? Like, constantly, like, you know, you're on the train, someone's like, oh, my feet are hurt. You got to be like, oh, uh, here, uh, take my chair. Uh, Cause you're pretty, and you're talking to me. Ugh. You know, you're like, you got a bar and it's like, well, I'm a little thirsty. Let me buy you a drink, cause you have booze. I'm like, how is that freedom? You see what I'm saying? But now I'm married, and no matter how many attractive women I meet, I can't do anything with them anyway. So I can fucking ignore them. <laughs> That's freedom, my friend. <laughs> Understand I me? Mean, now I'm on the train. She's like, oh, my feet are hurt. I'm like, well, you shouldn't wear such slutty shoes. <laughs> Fuck off, sister, I agree. I've been Tim McIntyre, thank you very much. <laughs>